Hi there, it's Ernest from TripAstute. In this video, we're discussing some tips on using ride-sharing services like Uber when traveling abroad. As many of you know, Uber has been pretty aggressive with expanding their services around the world. So much so that some places have seen protests from taxi operators and unions who feel extremely threatened by their presence. While Uber counters that they're creating new jobs, some feel like the money is being extracted rather than invested back in their country. While the politics of the service is complicated and controversial, I have to admit that the service is extremely useful when traveling abroad. In fact, when given the choice between using a local taxi or Uber, I usually prefer to use Uber since the service is usually cheaper and I like the fact that I don't have to negotiate the fee or exchange money with the driver. That being said, using ride sharing services in a foreign country can sometimes be confusing, especially when getting a ride from the airport. So today, I thought we would run through some tips to help you use a service when abroad. Number one, research the airport pickup information before your trip. Most times you'll see specific airport information when you open the Uber app that should tell you where to get your pickup. However, it doesn't hurt to get information online in advance. I remember arriving at Bangkok Airport a few years ago and having a spotty network connection. I was struggling to find the pickup spot and level, and I couldn't seem to get any information online. Luckily, I was able to ask around and figure it out. But in retrospect, I wish I had just checked out the Uber page for Bangkok ahead of time so I knew what to expect. Number two, send a photo of your location. When your driver arrives, there can sometimes be confusion on the exact location of your pickup, especially if there are multiple levels at the airport. What I've done in the past is to send a photo of my location to my driver, especially when I don't speak the local language. The messaging feature in the Uber app allows you to send photos to your driver, so don't hesitate to send visual information to help find your ride. Number three, review your pickup location. Don't assume that your current location is the exact pickup location. In some places, Uber will request that you walk to a better location in order to meet your driver. We noticed this in Lisbon, where the Uber app usually requested that we meet our driver away from the busy roads. Number four, know your options. Just because you've used Uber in your home country doesn't mean that you've seen all of Uber's service offerings. For example, you can request Uber Moto, which is essentially an UberX style motorcycle ride. While it's probably not the best option when you're trying to carry luggage from the airport, it's definitely a unique option when getting around town. Number five, add a credit card to your account. While I usually use Apple Pay when using Uber and Lyft in the United States, I noticed that the app required a credit card when using it in Europe, specifically in Portugal. As always, I recommend using a card that not only avoids any foreign transaction fees, but also one that rewards you for using ride-sharing services like the Chase Sapphire Reserve and Preferred Card. Number six, if you have a bag in the trunk, don't exit the vehicle before your driver. This tip actually applies to both ride sharing and taxi rides. I've not personally had a driver steal my luggage, but I always suggest remaining vigilant of your security and belongings. If you have a bag in the trunk of the vehicle, I would suggest waiting for the driver to get out of the car before you do. I might be overly paranoid about this, but I think it's good practice and it minimizes the chance of a driver leaving with your bags in the car, whether it's on purpose or by accident. Number seven, be cautious of partner services. While Lyft is expanding internationally, they do have some partnerships in countries. I used the Lyft app when I was traveling in Thailand and it basically matched me with a driver from a local ride sharing service. Everything seemed to be working okay and I ended up getting picked up from my hotel. The trouble came when I got to my destination. The driver wanted me to pay and I tried to explain that the payment was made through the app. I ended up sitting in the car for another 15 minutes while the driver made calls to their ride sharing service company to confirm the payment. It looks like Lyft is trying to expand natively in countries now, so this might not be an issue anymore. However, just be weary of any situations where you might be using another partner service from within the app. Number eight, have a plan B. While Uber and Lyft are awesome services, they are still new technologies and are not always allowed or accepted. For example, when we were in Barcelona, we noticed that Uber was shut down. So we relied on taxis and Metro to get around. While it seems impossible to stop the ride sharing trend from spreading, 
Just know that the service has been known to get shut down overnight, despite its impact on tourists and the local economy. Do you have any tips for using ride-sharing services when traveling abroad? If so, please share them in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions, please let us know. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Also, check out our website and subscribe to our newsletter for travel articles, updates, and information on giveaways. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.